Hey guys, what's going on? Tom here. Welcome to Wednesday. It's hump day. We're just getting over the hump. Now, because of that, we're going to try to get over some of the humps that you face um, on Amazon FBA. And those are basically your top six mistakes that any rookie or any new beginner will do. And uh, I have done. I have done this and I'm guilty of that. And I have lost money, um, lost certain things, inventory and all that stuff because I made these mistakes. So I wanna warn you guys, I wanna caution you guys that if you're starting out, please, please keep these things in mind. So here are my top sex errors or mistakes that you can do on Amazon FBA when you're starting out. The first one is product research. Guys, what is Amazon FBA? Amazon FBA is to sell profitable products on Amazon, right? So do your product research. Make sure that your products, you get the most stats do Jungle Scout, do Merchant Wars, try to figure out what is profitable, what is searched for, what is in demand. Last thing you want guys is end up like me. I had inventory here, inventory in um, United States sitting in the warehouse, Amazon FBA warehouse. Then I found out that my product was not profitable because I did not do my due diligence. And what happened? I had to basically destroy it. And nobody, there was no sales on that, like just a few. Um, and it, I lost a lot of money because of it. So I learned from a mistake. Now, every time I start on a product, I do proper product research, make sure I do my due diligence before I get into it. So guys, that's the last thing you wanna do is end up with excess inventory or inventory that is not gonna sell and you're paying FBA fees, uh, which includes your um, warehousing and all that stuff. And you've brought in, you've paid your manufacturer and you've paid the shipping to bring it into a warehouse. So please please keep that in mind do not make the same mistake second one finding products that are low in prices what do i mean by that every video that i do i always tell you guys that do not sell products that are below 15 dollars or even 20 dollars why because you have amazon fba fees to worry about you have shipping costs to worry about from your manufacturer uh, to an amazon fba warehouse and of course your manufacturing costs right so keeping all those things in mind, it could eat up more than 50% of your profit or of your price. Um, and uh, that is gonna leave you with very minimal profit if you are selling a product that is less than $15. So let's say you're selling a product that's $10, right? You better make sure that its manufacturing cost is less than 50 cents. Anything more than that, you're not gonna make money. So please, please keep in mind, Go for products um, that you can sell for $20 and over, preferably between $25 and $30. That is really gonna give you like at least $15 of profit margin into your pocket per unit uh, and will make sure that you can actually sustain your business because um, this is a long-term term you guys are getting into. It's not a, you know, I'm gonna sell this, whatever I make, I make kind of thing. You gotta build a business out of it. So you gotta think like a businessman. You gotta make sure that your price is, uh, you're getting items, first of all, that you know the prices uh, are right and the prices are more than $20 per unit. Very important. The third thing, third rookie mistake that people do, and this is another one that I have done, is I've contacted suppliers like I'm texting my friends on Alibaba, which is the worst thing you can do. And next thing you know what happens? Crickets. Nobody answered me. Nobody took me seriously. So my suggestion is please use a template. I've provided you guys one. Uh, I can send you guys a PDF of it or a Word file of it. And I've done videos on it and I've shown you guys step by step on how to make sure you contact your suppliers professionally to make sure they take you seriously, to make sure that they actually um, respond to your questions. And um, there's a certain way of asking and there are certain questions that you need to ask in order to, make, to let them know that, hey, I'm a serious buyer. I know my stuff, right? Um, I know what kind of information I need. Um, and so they can't fool you because, I mean, think about it. You're getting products manufactured in China um, you probably will never ever visit them unless you get really big and you're just contacting via Skype, via phone, via text, via Alibaba, that's it, right? So you have to make sure that they take you seriously as a company and they know that there are consequences if they don't do what they're supposed to do. So always, always use a template, make sure that they take you seriously, make sure that they provide you shipping information, uh, make sure to provide you cost per unit 
uh, based on certain MOQs, which is minimum order quantity. Um, make sure that they provide you dimensions, um, the weight and all that kind of stuff. So you know that you're getting all the information you need in order to um, do your due diligence and let them know at the same time that, hey, I'm a serious buyer and I know my shit. Number four, asking for one shipping code. Most of the time when we start manufacturing products and that's another one I did is my manufacturer say, hey, don't worry about it. We got people here. We're going to ship it to you. Uh, this is the cost um, of the shipment. You know, like these guys are great and everything. Right. What happens? Yeah. OK, the shipment got here um, in time, but I paid a lot more than I should have. So I calculated I paid 78 percent than the average code for that shipment. 78% guys, that's how crazy it is. So you got to get more than three to five quotes actually, I would say. Five quotes is even better. Get a quote through your uh, manufacturer. Contact freight forwarders, get quotes from them. There are actually websites that you can go to uh, to get quotes. So what do you need to do uh, to get, in order to get a quote? You need the dimensions. You need to know how many units fit um, on a skid. Um, you need to know if they are loose or not, if they are like, as the skid is tight. You need to know the weight in kilograms, okay? All these things are important in order for you to get a shipping quote. So that's the shipping that's from your manufacturer to an Amazon FBA warehouse. So do not make that rookie mistake, guys. Make sure you get a few codes and compare. And of course, you may not go with the cheapest one because you wanna make sure the service is good. You wanna make sure um, the uh, transit times. You gotta know how long your shipment is gonna be on the water um, versus how long it's gonna be on air. If you're shipping the smaller guys um, and your product is seasonal, it might be better to do air freight than ocean freight because ocean freight from China takes between 25 to 30 days. Yes, there are inventions that are being made. I mean, um, Tesla, I believe it is, is testing a super boat basically that can carry containers in four, uh, 14, 14 days, I believe it was, something like that. So it's half the time, but until we get that rolling and I'm sure the cost will be a lot higher, it takes up to 30 days. But air freight is a lot faster. You can get it within like two to three days, um, but costs are way different. And what you can send on air freight is way different. So if your product is light, I always suggest air freight. If your product is heavy, please do ocean because you'll save a lot of money that way, but you have to plan accordingly. Okay, number five, not having an optimized listing or title, right? People think that, oh, I can just put the name of the product in the title and that's it. No, there is a way to research. So guys, like, just like we use Merchant Words and we use Jungle Scout for product research, same thing, you can use certain tools in order to make sure you optimize your title. It's the same like if you guys have ever done YouTube videos, right? The title and uh, the description has to be optimized, which is basically the listing, right? You gotta make sure that your titling, it's something that people are searching you got to know that that's the highest search um, pro like title or phrase for that product. you got to do your research. you got to make sure that the description is exactly what your product is. Um, and it's actually optimized, meaning that uh, your description is also describing what the title is, is describing it in more detail. It has certain words that is used in order to um, basically... Um, uh, in order to search the item and uh, the backend keywords that you guys are gonna do, you also have to make sure that they are ex optimized as well. They are basically the top words that are used um, to search for that item. And Merchant Words is a great tool for that. I'm gonna do another tutorial this weekend on that because I can't stress the power of that. And I'm gonna show you guys how to find the top 100 keywords that you can use for your listing. And 100 is basically what Amazon allows you. So you have to make sure that these are the top 100 by search volume all over the world or in the market you're selling, right? Um, in order for you to optimize your listing. To, and that's gonna help you guys to appear on higher pages. So. Want to know how you can rank your product on page one? That's one of the most important things you can do in order to rank your product. And the last thing, number six, is something that a lot of people don't talk about because we talk a lot about the beginning process um, and then the rest of it just flows, but nobody talks about the end. And what do I mean? A lot of people get in the hype of selling and their items are flying off the shelf. What do they forget? Inventory. 
they realize that okay products are selling they get excited but they don't plan on how they will replenish their inventory it's very important like I said guys the shipping term or sorry the um, the shipping time that it takes for your product to come from China which most of these products are is gonna take you about 30 days so if you're doing ocean and your products are flying off the shelf and you also have, uh, have to account for manufacturing time right because it could take your manufacturer another two weeks to get you a certain number of units that you need so you have to plan ahead and that's the part of Amazon FBA like a lot of people talk about it as passive income it's not um, it's it is in a lot of sense but it is not because you still have to check your listing every day to make sure you know how much you're selling just like five ten minutes go to it make sure everything is good make sure everything is running great if you're running PPC campaigns make sure it's running great if your inventory is low make sure you order ahead of time and check your strengths see how much you're selling and that way you can project when you're gonna run out of inventory so that's why you always always have to make sure you bring your inventory so why is it important to replenish your inventory and not run out main reason is not to lose your listing on page one not to lose your ranking if you run out of inventory you can hold it for maybe two to three days and I'll show you guys the tricks how you can hold that but other than that your listing will fall off you probably will have to close it if you don't replenish it on time and all the hard work that you do to build your business up to that point is kind of wasted and it's happened to me before uh, I couldn't get inventory on time it took like two weeks uh, more than um, basically two weeks more than I anticipated and that just killed it that just killed it for me so I lost money because of it I had to destroy I mean sorry I had to um, basically close my listing and that's the worst thing you can do you lose your ranking you lose everything uh, with that listing and then you start all over again that's why we always make sure that um, our inventory is replenished on time so let's do a quick recap we talked about product research and how important it is to make sure you find profitable products we talk about products that are the right price make sure you're selling a product that is twenty dollars and over preferably thirty to account for your Amazon FBA fees your manufacturing costs and your shipping costs and you want to make sure you have at least fifty percent profit margin in there so it's worth your while right you gotta talk to suppliers with a template. You gotta ask the right questions. You gotta let them know that you're a professional company and you're serious about this for them to take you seriously. And knowing your information, well, let them know that, hey, I know what's going on. I know how to do business. So they're not gonna try to trick you because they don't wanna lose your business. Very important, guys. Next one is to ask for a quote, asking for one quote only which is the worst thing you can do. You wanna make sure you ask for three to five quotes, so shipping quotes that is, um, to bring your products into an Amazon FBA warehouse. Um, you wanna get quotes from forwarders, forwarders their online websites, and uh, of course from your supplier to see what kind of pricing they get. Sometimes they get good pricing because they have buying power, sometimes they don't. A lot of fair forwarders have uh, consoles and stuff like that happening as well, so they may have like very good ship, uh, shipping rates for you guys. So what you need from your supplier are basically the dimensions, weight, if it's loose cargo, if it's not, if, it's, uh, if you're doing a full container, uh, or if you're doing LCL, how many cubic meters, very important guys, and that kind of stuff will help you determine how to get uh, shipping rates and uh, get them efficiently so you don't have to go back and forth with your supplier to get that information because anybody any forwarder you go to they'll ask you that information the next one is not having an optimized listing and um, basically back in keywords so um, the title the description of your listing and the keywords that you use you have to make sure they are the top hundred search keywords for that product based on volume and I've shown you guys this how to do it and I'm gonna go over it again with you guys how to do it on merchant words and how, what to do from there how to use jungle scout to basically do all these kinds of research in order for you to get those top keywords so you can optimize your listing it's a lot like YouTube right um, you got to use certain keywords that people search in order for your video to get more views and stuff like that so very similar and that's how that's how just the online business works and the last thing is replenishing your 
inventory on time so you don't run out you don't lose your listing you don't close it and you mainly you don't lose your ranking on page one because once you get there and as long as your sales are happening it's going to become a lot easier for you to sell you don't want to lose all that hard work because it will take a little bit of time for you to get on page one and once you get there you don't want to lose it trust me guys it's happened to me and it is not pleasant it's very stressful it's very demotivating because you got to start everything from ground up so that's it guys thank you so much i appreciate your viewership if you haven't subscribed already subscribe uh, below hit the bell button and let me know which one of these mistakes you guys have made and what it has costed you thanks again guys i'll see you guys on friday